I'm right here. My, first of all, my name is Chris Throne, and I come from a severely disadvantaged part of County Clare in Bell Harbour. And I'm here in this wonderful shop, musical shop of John Custy, and I'm surrounded by guitars and fiddles and concertinas and all kinds of musical instruments. And John has invited me down to play a few tunes, so I'll start off with a few horn pipes. The first one is called the. Um, Why oh, I, I forget the name of the first one. But the second one is called the Flowing Tide. So I play a few horn pipes. <laughs> Tune. They're great tunes from a man from a, a severely disadvantaged area like Newquay. Chris, listen, we've been trying to get you down here for a long time and a few failed attempts of meeting you at the house, okay? So I'm glad to have gotten you here eventually. I finally got here. <laughs> listen, will you tell me a story about the concertina you're playing? Because it looks like a wheat stun and yeah. it looks like something's very close to your heart. Well, I have it since 1960. Uh, I went. The one, the one I had was, it was almost finished and it was out of tune and all that. So I decided I'd get a new one and I went to Wheatstones in London where they make them in a place called Islington. Islington in North I, London, was yes, it? Yes, and I went to the factory. And as, I, as I've as i told you, I went into a room where there was about two or three hundred concertinas. And Wheatstone, the, the Mr. Wheatstone said, you can stay all day and test them all out 
and I, you wouldn't have them tested in a week, all that was in it at that time. So I finally picked this one, and I was told, leaving home, my mother, God rest her, she said, money is very scarce, don't pass 30 pounds. Which was the king's ransom in back the then. Mm. So when I had, I picked this one out, and he said it was top of the range, and it was 64 pounds. Oh and my heart dropped up when I, when I had to 64 pounds, but I just said, it would be once in a lifetime, I might never again get a chance of, of getting one like this. So I said I'd keep it. But um, the day after I get there, I was coming back on a Monday, and God be good to Seamus Ennis, he would hear a programme going on the BBC from 2.30 to 3 o'clock of a Sunday, and he found out I was over there. And did you know him before this? You, you were crossed paths with I him? I did, I had met him before that. Sure. I had met him, yeah. But uh, he found out I was over there and didn't he contact me. I was coming home on Monday and he said he had a programme of a Sunday and he wanted to know would I play a few tunes live on the BBC. So for the great chance to get to the BBC, I said I, I might never be there again anyway. Sure. So I went to the BBC on the Sunday and I played for 15 minutes. and. It was great. I was delighted to say that I played in the BBC. And the week after I came back, I got a cheque from the BBC for £20, and that brought the concertina down to 44 So I think I've only bought two more installments to play in it. <laughs> <laughs> and did your mother get, ever get over the shock of no, you? No, no, she didn't mind. No, the £20, the 20 pounds were the bonus, which was great to get that sure, money back, like, you know. Yeah. But, uh, I still have it. And it never caused me much trouble. I, I got a new billet button in about a few years ago. I sent it to Germany to get a, a billet button. All right. So who did that? Sutner, was it? Jorgen Sutner. Mr. Sutner. He used to call to the house. Like, good, know. good. But he, he dismantled it and he brought the billet with him. And Lovely. Sent it back in about a week. In Brilliant. So, oh, yeah. Excellent. Chris, there are two questions people ask in the shop about Chris Troni. Yeah. And one of them is, you come from that disadvantaged area up in Newquay and yeah, North Bell Clare, Har Bell Harbour, okay, Bell Harbour, down yeah. by the sea and very close to the burn, which is part of the burn. But sure, we're in the heart of the burn. The mountains are all around us. The sure. burn mountains, we're surrounded by the mountains. I know. Yeah. A lot of people ask, and maybe it's an ideal with them, has your environment shaped your music in any way? Has, has that kind of magic that is the burn actually seeped into you as, as a person who's, who's grown up there, who's born there, grown up there? Well, I wouldn't be too sure. Of course, this music has gone back generations. Of course, my father played and my grandfather played. My, my grandfather. What instrument did he play? Well, before the concertinas ever came into being, he used to play a Jew's harp. All right. And he was born. He was born in. He was born in 1829. Wow. And he died in 1927. He was 98 years. Right. He died. And he used to play the, the juice app and then when the concertinas came on the market, he used to play concertina and then he handed it on to my father. Right. And then my father handed it on to me and I have it handed on to Your son to Francis. My son Francis right. and, and 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 my daughter Anne. And as well as that we've it handed on to two or three, four grandchildren. Grandchildren, right. So it's a continuation of the music like you know. Brilliant, yeah. Since uh, eighteen since eighteen twenty nine. Which is yeah, not too far off the Catholic emancipation. No. Right. No. Listen, another question people ask too is and I've I've witnessed it once, we were playing for a group of tours with Frank Custy up in up in the Bourne, yeah. Cow in the Bourne, and you arrived in yeah. and you sat beside me and push over there okay and had a nice few tunes. Yeah. And about twenty minutes later I said, Keep an eye on that concertina and he was wondering, Where in the Christ is he going? Out and dance for a half an hour, set <laughs> dancing with the rest of them. <laughs> which helps which now? Set dancing music or is it Set dancing, yeah. Set dan I oh. suppose it's 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 a rhythm it is, yeah. A lot of people say that set dancers make good musicians. Yeah, well, my father, God rest him, he, uh, before these halls or these sessions or anything, it was always house dancing. And I remember when I was small, I used to go to these house dancers. I used to be brought, like, and my father and a few more musicians used to be playing at house dances. And uh, that, that, that was the, the beginning of it, like, you know. Sure. But I got a crave for that time. I mean, when I was maybe maybe eight or nine years of age. Believe it or not, I'm playing it. I'm playing the concertina 78 years. Oh my God. I am. Yeah. I've started at eight. All right. And I'm 86 now. Christ. So I'm playing it 78 years. And dancing as long. Yeah. 
and still dancing by all accounts. Yeah. Oh, Jesus, you've got healthy. Listen, Chris, thanks a lot. It's been a pleasure having you here. It's, it's, ah, well, sure, it's, it's great. I, I, it's, I'm a long time coming, but I never get the chance of. Well, look, I'm, as I say, I'm glad it happened today, and I'm glad, like, those stories are very important, you know, yeah. and I suppose it's going through the generations, it just goes to show you that ah, yeah. it's, a, it's a definitely a generational thing, you know, and it's just passed on and passed on. Yeah, well, I mean, if we, if, as I said, if you go back to when my grandfather was born in 1829, that's, that's a long, long time ago. Wow. And, I mean, down through the years. I, ha I had an uncle, his name was Michael, Michael Droney, and... At the time, he was supposed to be, before I was born, and I often heard my father say it, that he was the best fiddle player in Ireland at that time. Wow. And he died at the age of 21. God, that and was very unusual in your family now, because you yeah, have longevity. And what happened to him was, coming back, coming back from house dances, and he, he got weight and got pneumonia, and he died. Oh, poor man. At 21. Young he, was, he was supposed to be a great fiddle player. Right. So I suppose it was all... The, the music was in the family, I think. Definitely, right. Be, yeah. And did you ever uh, cross cross paths with a fiddle? Did you ever play a bit yourself? No, no, I Concertina didn't. Concertina was this. What my father, <coughs> my father used to play this, and he used to play it about, he used to play it about three nights a week. And before we'd go to bed, of course, there was no electric light, no, there was no television, no radio, no nothing that time. And he'd be playing it a few nights a week for maybe half an hour, no, do you know? And before we'd go to bed, We'd, he'd tell us to go up and dance, to warm our feet before we go to bed, you know. <laughs> and we'd be dancing around the floor. That's when we were very young now. Sure. We'd say that we were only eight or ten or whatever. Yeah, yeah. That's come back a long time. Wow. So. That's amazing. And listen, the last question people ask is, how many albums have you out? You have... Uh, well, I, I made a few... I made a few You've about three or four, have you? I made a few recordings in the States. And then I, 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 I done two... The, the last two I met here. Yeah, the first are rocking down the in Bell Harbour. Rock and, uh, down from Bell Harbour. Yeah. The last two I met, yeah. So when is the next one out, people are asking? No, no, I have the last one, mate. I have the, I have the last one, but there'll be no more. Oh, that's it? Oh, that's it. That's down it. from Bell Harbour is it? Down from Bell Harbour, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Chris, thanks again for coming in. It's been a, an absolute pleasure ah, well, having so you here. I, I mean, I'm delighted to be here. I'm sorry it took so long. But before I go, I composed, I composed a slow air called peaceful Corkham Row and as you know Corkham Row Abbey is up in Bell Harbour. Sure. And um, will I play it for you? I'd love it. I'm I sure the people watching this will love it as well. Yeah, peaceful. And I, I just played it an awful lot of an awful lot of people just requested at funerals and that kind of thing, you know, on account of Corkham Row Abbey being the burying ground of the parish, you know. Lovely. So I'd I'd play it for you before I go. Thanks a lot, Chris.